There are four trig functions left to graph. In this video, we'll graph the tangent and cotangent functions. Tangent is a little special and useful because its formula, sine over cosine, exactly corresponds to the formula for slope, which is rise over run. So the slope of this line is rise over run. This is also equal to the tangent of the angle the line makes with the horizontal axis. Tangent theta equals sine over cosine, which is rise over run. That's just an interesting bonus. Since tangent is sine over cosine, it will be zero where the sine is zero. The sine is zero at angle zero, and yes indeed, this horizontal line has a slope of zero. Looking at the fraction again, tan will be one where the sine and cosine are equal to each other. This happens at pi over four radians, where they're both square root of two over two. So tangent pi over four is one, and the slope of the terminal side of pi over four radians is also one. As we let the angle get larger and closer and closer to a right angle, the sine gets closer and closer to one, and the cosine gets smaller, closer and closer to zero. This fraction grows very large. For example, the tangent of 89 degrees is about 57 and the tangent of 89.9999 degrees is about 573,000. As the angle approaches pi over two, the tangent approaches infinity. Now let's consider an obtuse angle, which would be in quadrant two. Let's imagine it gets smaller and smaller as it approaches pi over two from the other side. In quadrant two, the cosine is negative and the sine is positive. So sine over cosine will be a negative number. The magnitude of tangent near pi over two will be very large. It will just be a very large negative number. Due to symmetry, it shouldn't surprise you that the tangent of 91 degrees is about negative 57. And the tangent of 90.0001 degrees is about negative 573,000. You don't need to memorize those numbers. I'm just trying to show you that tangent gets very, very large as the angle's cosine approaches zero. Now we have enough background information to plot the graph of the tangent function. Let's plot from left to right on the theta axis the multiples of pi over four radians. As we noted, the tangent of zero is zero because the sine is zero. And at pi over four, the tangent is one. Sine and cosine are equal, so their ratio is 1. At pi over 2, the tangent is undefined. It's standard practice to draw a dashed vertical line to denote an asymptote. An asymptote is a boundary that a graphed function can approach but not touch or cross. It's often very helpful when graphing trig functions to start with the asymptotes. The four remaining trig functions, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant, all have asymptotes because they all have sine or cosine in their denominator, and sine and cosine are zero at certain angles. So let's go ahead and sketch the asymptotes for tangent, which occur where the denominator, cosine, is zero, which is at pi over two, the top of the unit circle, and at three pi over two, the bottom of the unit circle. And of course, every angle coterminal with these is also an asymptote. We noted that in quadrant one, as the angle approaches pi over two, the tangent gets bigger and bigger. I'll just draw an arrow here to denote a large number. And just past pi over two, in quadrant two, the tangent is a very large negative number. So a downward arrow here. At three pi over four radians, sine and cosine have the same magnitude of square root of two over two but the cosine is negative and the sine is positive, so the ratio is negative one. And that brings us to pi radians, the left edge of the unit circle, where the sine is zero, so tangent is zero. In quadrant three, we have five pi over four radians. Both sine and cosine are negative square root of two over two. Negative divided by negative is positive, so the tangent is positive one. Three pi over two is an asymptote, and we have the same situation as at pi over two. In quadrant three, the tangent becomes a large positive number as the angle approaches three pi over two radians. But just on the other side of three pi over two in quadrant four, the ratio is a very large negative number because the cosine is positive and the sine is negative. 
At 7 pi over 4, the tangent is negative 1. And at 2 pi, we're back to 0, since the sine of 2 pi is 0. So we've gone all the way around the circle, and the pattern repeats in both directions. Here's what the graph looks like. Between the asymptotes, the value of the tangent function is ever increasing. You should be able to answer these questions about the tangent function. At what angles is it undefined? At what angles is it zero? At what angles is it positive one and negative one? When you know these answers, you can easily sketch the tangent function from scratch, which you'll probably be asked to do on a test. Start by drawing the vertical asymptotes, which will always be at quadrantal angles. Be careful when drawing asymptotes because we're going to graph cotangent next, and its asymptotes are different. Draw the vertical asymptotes where the ratio's denominator is zero. Seeing the unit circle in your head makes this all very easy. The angle midway between the asymptotes will have tangent zero. Then, you really just need to know which quadrants have positive tangents and which have negative. Positive in quadrants 1 and 3, where the sine and cosine have the same signs. Negative in quadrants 2 and 4, where the sine and cosine have opposite signs. The point midway between the asymptote and the zero point will be a multiple of pi over 4 angle, which are all positive 1 or negative 1 because sine and cosine have the same magnitude of square root of 2 over 2. The asymptotes and the 0, 1, and negative 1 points between them should be all you need to sketch the tangent curve. Two important points. When you draw the tangent curve, don't let it touch an asymptote. And at the top and bottom edges of your graph, include an arrowhead on the ends of your curves to let your instructor know that you know the curves extend towards infinity. Now let's turn our attention to cotangent, which is cosine over sine. Let's start with the asymptotes, which are the vertical lines where sine theta equals zero. These are at zero, pi, two pi, and every angle coterminal with these, which are angles on the left and right edge of the unit circle. I picked green as the memory aid color for cotangent, since its abbreviation, COT, is the word cot, and army cuts are green. Sometimes the silliest things are the easiest to remember. Cotangent, COT cot, green. The zero angle is an asymptote, so let's look at a very small angle right next to the asymptote, perhaps one degree. One degree has a cosine that's very nearly one and a very small sine, so the fraction is a relatively large positive number. Based on the symmetry we've seen around the circle, would you be surprised to hear that the cotangent of one degree is about 57? Let's draw an upwards arrow here to denote that the cotangent extends towards positive infinity at small angles. It has this behavior at all asymptotes, and like tangent, when we move to the other side, the infinity switches signs. So we have these arrows. Midway between the asymptotes, the cosine is zero, so the cotangent is zero. And the pi over four angles will have magnitude one, and just like tangent, their positive negative sign will depend on the quadrant. Positive in quadrants one and three, where cosine and sine have the same signs, and negative in quadrants two and four, where cosine and sine have opposite signs. And you can probably see where we're heading. Here's what cotangent looks like. And here are tangent and cotangent together. Since tangent and cotangent are reciprocals, they'd be positive and negative together in the same quadrants. And also, since they're reciprocals, cotangent will be 1 wherever tangent is 1, and negative 1 where tangent is negative 1. And also, again, since they're reciprocals, the angle where one crosses the x-axis is an asymptote for the other. It's interesting how they flow in opposite directions, ascending for tangent, descending for cotangent, but are positive-negative in the same quadrants. The period for both tangent and cotangent is pi radians. They repeat themselves twice as often as sine and cosine, because in quadrants 3 and 4, they repeat exactly the pattern from quadrants 1 and 2. There's no TR-19 video with extra problems, 
but you should be able to sketch nice graphs of these functions with asymptotes clearly marked, as well as the points where the functions are 0, 1, and negative 1. Include arrowheads and don't touch the asymptotes. The unit circle makes this all very easy. In the next video, TR-20, we'll graph the last two trig functions, secant and cosecant.